I love it when Whitney Reynolds drops by, and you're not going to be coming by much longer <laughs> because you're getting ready to explode. No offense, but you are. <laughs> I even said to you earlier, you're not going to make it through your duty. day. It is an issue, Brooke. I am having to extend the microphone out further than normal, <laughs> but I'll be back, guys. Don't worry after yeah, I deliver. Yeah, I'll be back for Whitney's Women, and this is a great one to kind of end before the twins come because I love this organization because it really is saving lives. We have the Kidney Foundation in with us. How are you, Ann and Jen? Great, thanks. Thanks yeah. so much for having us. We also have Tim who donated a kidney. So we have a man in the house. Whoop, whoop. Yeah. It doesn't happen very often. <laughs> it doesn't. You know, it's so funny because every now and then on Twitter, someone will say, do you ever have men come in the studio with you? And I'm like, of course we love our men, especially Tim. So we'll get to your story in a minute. But Anne, tell us a little bit about what you guys are doing. Sure. So the National Kidney Foundation of Illinois is a nonprofit, and we service the entire state of Illinois. The three pillars of our mission are really prevention, education, and empowerment. We have about 1.1 million people in Illinois that have kidney disease, and it's estimated that about 900,000 of them don't know that they have it. So we have a kidney mobile that actually travels throughout the state of Illinois, providing free screenings for kidney disease, diabetes, and high blood pressure, because diabetes and high blood pressure are the two leading causes of kidney disease. And we, you know, we're trying to make sure that we don't have, we don't continue this horrible trend in this epidemic in our country of over a million people in Illinois, over 26 million in the country alone. So not to sound naive, I'm not very medical, but I know we need our kidneys. But tell me, like, if someone's having a kidney issue, it can be fatal. Absolutely. Um, we actually did a screening a number of weeks ago where the gentleman came in, had absolutely no idea that he had any sort of health problems. He was in end-stage renal disease, was referred to Stroger Hospital, and was immediately put on dialysis. So dialysis is definitely a life-saving treatment um, as well as transplantation. Can I ask a question, too, because I, too, have no medical knowledge. But um, obviously people donate kidneys all the time, so it's perfectly fine for a healthy person to live with just one kidney? Absolutely. Tim okay. over there, ding, ding, ding. We yeah. have a one kidney yeah. in here. I, I was just curious. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't prevent you from doing anything. You lead your life just like you normally would with two kidneys. Absolutely. Okay. The, when you go through the transplantation process and the, and the process of being a donor, um, there are a lot of tests, met, both medical and mental tests that are mm. that are done. And if you're not the right candidate, they won't they won't take the, ki the right. kidney out of you to give to somebody else. So, okay. and, and I'm sure Tim can speak a little bit more to that about his own personal story. Yeah. Let's bring our man in the conversation. Yeah. Tim Whitey. Never have yeah. A guy. So Tim, you actually were going through the donation process of your kidney for your mother. Right. And um, was it wasn't a fit, right? Or right. We weren't we were a fit initially okay. and then she had some blood work and the blood work changed some of her blood cells and so then we weren't a fit. And so then we had to go on. Um, I offered to donate my kidney through a different set of circumstances. I wasn't able to directly donate. So we ended up going to Northwestern Hospital, which I believe is one of the top donor programs uh, and transplant programs in the country. And they arranged for a swap of kidneys. Wow. And so they tested me and tested me, and because of my good health, I was able to donate a kidney to someone else. And as a result, so I was considered a lifesaver, and my mom was a recipient. And so my mom then, because I was willing to give mine to someone else, was able to receive one from someone else. That is incredible. So it helped kind of move her up the list. Is that kind of how it works in a sense? If you find a donor to give one, then they can get one. Absolutely, and that's a really good point, Whitney, because what was going on was if my mom was going to get a deceased donor, um, the list is over 200,000 mm -hmm. people, and they rank it based on age, and so she was in her 70s, and so it was almost, in, she would not have made it waiting for a deceased donor. Well, and Brooke, I want to bring up that Tim is not like, it's not that you're just like sitting around. You, he runs a law firm, so giving a kidney oh, is a wow. huge deal because he's, he's running that, and then he has to be out of commission because he's giving a kidney. Well, and that was my next question. When you donate, how long are you out of commission yeah. for? And what, what, I mean, obviously the recovery time, I mean, that's major surgery, so it's not like an outpatient thing, right? Right, no, you're out the next day. However, because they're cutting into your abdomen, it's a very serious surgery, and recovery is, is six to eight weeks. The good news is that most donors, because they're a donor, are super healthy like I was and so and also never had surgery before so there's kind of like two things going on there's one is 
they've never had surgery like myself and so it freaks the body out because you're having this surgery right. um, and then you're not you don't know what to expect as far as pain and recovery and then there's this other part which is the recovery process the first couple days is pretty painful then you start your body starts to heal but you still are in limitations for about six weeks by the eighth week though it's almost like it never happened and since that time I've been healthier than I've ever been. And you don't realize you're running only on one kidney. It's not like you feel like you're like, huh, I only feel my one kidney today. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> and that's really, it's a really interesting thing because I get asked that question a yeah. lot. I mean, other than seeing my scar once in a while, and which is fading itself, I don't even, other than seeing my mom do so yeah, well, oh, it's such I a blessing. That. Yeah. Um, I don't really think about it. And uh, in, in fact, um, because kidneys are such an unknown thing as Ann was saying about what what the process is of their of their health right. um, once you're made aware of it and donation is one way uh, hopefully that's not how everybody figures it out but the 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 education on how to keep your kidneys healthy is 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 so powerful and it actually leads to a much healthier lifestyle okay that's awesome so I'm um, Jen I'm gonna throw this to you because we're talking about kidney health and everything like that is this something that you would recommend, like if you didn't have a relative that needed one or you didn't have a close connection, should people just donate their kidneys if they are he healthy and willing? Absolutely. Oh my gosh, yeah. I mean, there's so many people, Tim was mentioning how long the waiting list is for, for um, deceased kidneys. And if there were more living donors in the world, that list would just start to diminish slowly over time. So. And it's something that people can do. They Is there programs in place for that? Like Yeah. Okay. So, so there are six transplant centers in the Chicago area. Northwestern was the one that Tim went to, but there's also... Um, you know, they're, they're listed on our website on nkfi.org, but there's Rush, there's um, Advocate, there's Loyola. Uh, there's, so there's those six. You would reach out to whichever one is closest to you, whichever is most convenient, and say, I want to be a living kidney donor, and they would take it from there and see if there's somebody that you're a match for or somebody that you can start a chain with, like Tim was a part of, and they'll help you figure that out. And Tim, this is something that not only did you take personally, but professionally, you now, like your law firm actually supports the kidney. Foundation. Yeah, yeah, and we're so proud to do that. And of course, again, my mom's life mm -hmm. was the, the saving grace. But if it wasn't for the National Kidney Foundation, who actually got us in touch with the, with the information for donation, and then lining us up with the program at Northwestern and the doctors there, mm -hmm. my mom's life was saved through the National Kidney Foundation uh. of Illinois. And so I am uh, committed to my support, my law firm support, my personal support to the organization for the rest of my life. That speaks volumes. And so what event do you have coming up? So our next event is actually our largest in size. It's Walk for Kidneys. It's scheduled for Saturday, June 25th in Lincoln Park. And we expect four to 5,000 individuals to come out. We have dialysis patients, family members, people who are walking in memory of a loved one that they lost to kidney disease, people who are walking in memory of their, uh, their deceased donor. Um, and it's just a great day of camaraderie, people being together. Um, we have a health fair. We have a number of exhibitors. It's free. We encourage people to fundraise. But um, it is a free event. And you know, obviously, we're hoping for great weather. Um, but we'd love to have people come out if they're listening to the, the show right now yeah and this is one of your events I hope to be at the one in the fall the big gala yeah right yeah because you have that coming up but this is a walk this is a good idea for people to get out get grooving this summer and absolutely come support um, saving lives really yes absolutely it's it's really we have a black tie gala we have two golf outings we have a number of other ancillary events but the walk it has always been my favorite event, and I've been with the foundation for 14 years, and I think it's because it's all walks of life. It's it's mm -hmm. people from all different parts of the of the city, the state, et cetera. It's just wonderful. One, that I'm, sounds like so yeah, much fun. I know, and I'm so glad you came on. Tim, I know Like, what's weird about opening up about your personal story is like personal, but I'm so glad to have a man in here telling <laughs> that, you know, it's not, you aren't, it's not anything, not that it's not a big deal, but you're giving and saving lives. And yours didn't directly save your mom, but it did. Yeah. And it helped save someone else as well. well and you know what, uh, Tim, you are so, I don't want to say nonchalant, but he's so low-key about it, too. I mean, it, it's such a huge thing to have done. Well, it's pretty crazy. I've known Tim for a number of years, and it just happened to come up in one of our conversations one time. Oh, yeah, the time I... Um, gave my kidney. That's funny. And then I'm like, what? <laughs> right, right, and then, stop. you know, we're all about helping organizations yeah. here in Chicago. So it was a fit to have you guys in today. It is an honor to have you on Whitney's Women. Well, thank you so much for having us. We really appreciate it.
Thank Thanks. you so much for coming in. And don't forget to uh, check out the Whitney, Whitney Reynolds Show on PBS Lakeshore. Mm -hmm. Monday nights at 6.30, everyone. There you go. <laughs> all right. We are uh, wrapping things up here on the weekly show, too. Thank you to all of my guests. Thank you, Whitney, of course, for dropping by. Probably the next time I see you, you're going to have some babies in your hand. You know what, girlfriend? <laughs> I'll wheel my wagon in. All right. Have a great weekend. We'll talk to you next week on the weekly show.